for like I knew I was looking for freedom. I wanted freedom from before, which is why I love traveling, right? I love the freedom of traveling and things like that. But I didn't know how to go about getting that freedom. And in the four hour work week is what I learned that you need financial freedom. Financial like the freedom. only freedom that you can have like the only way you can actually be free is having financial freedom. Wow. <laughs> Happy! Hi. Hey. All right, so Chi, I've known you for quite some time. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't like what? 10, 11? Over ten years. Over ten years. Yeah, totally. What brought you to Japan initially, and what was that? Yeah. So initially, me and my sisters, we watched a lot of anime. We loved anime, specifically one called Ranma One Half. I don't know if you heard of it. I've it's never. Old school. It's old school. But we loved it. We picked it up at Blockbuster. Oh wow, Blockbuster! <laughs> Bringing me back here. We saw it at Blockbuster. We thought it was a regular cartoon. Turns out it's anime and it was about Japan. And so that got me interested in Japan. And then when I was out at, I was doing an internship in San Francisco, I met someone who did the JET program. And I mentioned I wanted to go to Japan. And so he said, oh, if you're going to Japan, you have to do JET. And before that, I had no idea what JET was. Wow. I applied to JET and I got in. And then I came out to Japan. Were you thinking to stay as long as you have? Or was not it not as you Oh my thinking goodness. When you wow. Because for me, it was just like, I thought it was going to be one year. Like, just have an exactly. adventure and exactly. go back to my life. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was supposed to only be one year because I was going to medical school. And I had already gotten into one medical school and I deferred it. I was like, I'm just going to go to Japan. I want to live abroad before I get tied down in right, medical right. school. I came on jet. Little did you know. I know. Little did <laughs> I know. That's a long deferment. No, exactly. And I think you can only defer for one year. Of course, as you know, right. I got stuck here got for like three years but on jet um, because I loved it so much and my kids were the best. So ended up not going to that medical school. And then by that time, I, I was thinking, I was counting the years, right? And then so if I had to go to medical school, one, I had to take the MCATs all over again. I would have to apply all over again, wow, yeah. then get into school, and then another four years of schooling, and then another at least three years of internships. I thought I'd be way too old. <laughs> Slash, um, I think you look like you're five. But I know, that's still, it's still, I know, still, right? And I was like, oh, well, I want to get married, I want to do all these things. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll put off medical school until maybe I'm 50. If I still want to do it, I'll go back. So, yeah, the plan was only right. one, one year. year. So, Japan, you came, you loved Japan, it. Japan, they get you. It does they get you. Pull you in. Pulls you in. Pulls you in. So, here, you kind of went back and then you came back again. Yep. Yeah, what brought you back? The reason I left the first time was kind of not for my myself. It was kind of for my family because they were always asking me, oh, when are you coming back? When are you going to start your career? You know, when are you going to get it going? Like, get back to the real world? I know, I know that. Say. I know those questions. So I thought I had to go back. Like, I thought, oh, my, like, you know, time is passing me by. I got to get a career going. The pressure. And so that's why I went back. And so when I went back, I kind of regretted leaving. So always having that regret, I kind of knew I had to go back if I was going to get over the regret of nice. leaving Japan. Gotcha. I mean, I guess to really to live for myself instead of other people. And just be back in Japan, which I had loved before, so. So this year, last year? Last year. Last year. You began the Sistapod. Yes. I love the yes. names, really cute. When exactly did you start it? Or was it like, in my head, in your head, two years ago, so 2019, 2019 is when I first started thinking about it. That year, I gave a seminar, I gave a talk uh, at the Black Women in Japan's conference about saving money and building wealth. And so after that talk, it really got me thinking, one, people really need to know this information and people don't actually know any of it. Two that I could really help people learn about finances and start building their wealth and things like that. So after I did that workshop is when I started thinking about what I could do to help. And so I started thinking about what could I name this organization? What exactly is it? My bigger goal is for it to be more of an organization. At 
the moment. It's more of a website that I have that's dedicated to helping women learn about their finances, pay off debt, and achieve financial independence. Because I believe that every woman, everybody really, um, but women in general don't really know much about their finances, and I really want them to be able to live life like you know on their own terms, to be able to do what they want, and to be financially secure so they don't have to worry about their finances, and actually do what they want to do, and what they're meant to do in life. But my bigger vision is to make it more of an organization like a community like we can have like a forum or discussion about money about building wealth you know have meetups kind of things I wanted to have meetups in person like in Japan or maybe in different countries as well okay. it's kind of like in its budding yeah, stages yeah, yeah, yeah. not exactly you have a vision but it's right. growing you've been doing right. a lot of work in it how did you learn these lessons? How did you get all this knowledge? Right, what has been your right. journey with finance? I started like most people <laughs> back in the day, you know, because the thing is, you learn about finances, you learn about money from your environment growing up, your parents, sure. from sure. your friends, from whatever city you grew up in. Mm. Growing up in Baltimore in a single family household, mm. we did not learn about finances at all. We had no idea and it was kind of more of a living paycheck to paycheck, not really having um, enough money. Because it was so normal, you start to think that that's how life that's how it's supposed, supposed to be, be right? right? You're always right. supposed to be kind of like, oh, I need to work to pay this bill, oh, I don't have enough money type right. thing. Always so trying to make ends meet. Always trying to make ends meet, right. yeah, yeah. So I kind of grew up almost in that mindset, but I feel like that kind of made me more, more stingy, not stingy, like, but I was more aware of my money. That's the one thing that helped me growing up kind of poor. I realized how important money was. So I was very like, you know, I would check my receipts. I was like, how much are you charging me here? And I was that's, really that's good. A good thing. Right, yeah, no, that was a good thing that came out of it. But, and what I realized when I came to Japan, because that's when I really had my first full time on your job. Own, right, I was right. on my own, right. right? What I realized is that I still had the kind of the belief that money, you work so that you can get money and spend it, uh, right? And so when I was here, I was actually consumer yeah, mindset. It's a consumer, yeah. consumer's mindset, right? So I realized I still had that when I came to Japan because I was making so much money. You know, we were making that good jet, money. That on program jet. money, yeah, it was good, pretty good. Good money, yeah. and so I had all this money, right. and then of course, what do I do? It's just kind of spend it. Spend, right. And then I looked up maybe three years later after I went home, and I was like, wow, where did all my money go? <laughs> You know, I'm reminded of like those, you know, young celebrities or athletes. Yep. They yep. make all this you money and then so you hear later money. they're broke. And then they're following you know? through bankruptcy. Right. Exactly. Like it's because they haven't changed their mindset about money mm. and like what money, what you should well, be doing. They say you give a man a, a fish, he could eat for a day, you give him, yeah, you teach him, teach him, how, how, to teach fish. him how to fish. He'll eat, eat forever. forever. Exactly. That idea. Exactly. When I came back out to Japan after going home and like, having to work to make ends meet like yo I gotta get this money I gotta work at like I work as a waitress and all kinds of random stuff because I didn't want to get locked into a serious job because I knew I wouldn't come back to Japan. What really turned it for me was my sister suggested uh, that I read this book called The 4 Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Changed my life because even when I came back to Japan um, I was still good I was saving my money and things like that but like I felt like I was still searching for something, something was missing. When I read that book, it, I realized what I, what I was looking for. Cause that book wow. talked about freedom. And I'm like, that is exactly what I've been searching for. Like I knew I was looking for freedom. I wanted freedom from before, which is why I love traveling, right? I love the freedom of traveling and things like that. But I didn't know how to go about getting right. that freedom. And in the four hour work week is what I learned that you need financial freedom. Financial like the freedom. only freedom that you can have, like the only way you can actually be free is having financial freedom. Wow. So you gotta get your money right. And that's when, that's, a that's total how I, shift. I shifted yeah. everything. And I was like, ah, it's the money. I need to get my money right and then I'll be free. So you zeroed in on money. I gotta be yep. more organized, yep. learn about it. Yep. And yep. Just have a different attitude for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how to be like, cause you know, financial freedom is different from for everybody. So I realized I didn't need a ton of money. I don't need millions and millions of dollars to be actually financially free. Especially since my expenses I keep so low anyway. So I don't need that much money. And so just knowing that, like when I, I calculated out how much money I would need to be financially free, I was like, oh, I can do that. And it made it seem so much more attainable.
What does that actually fight. mean to you, being financially free? It means not having to worry about where the money's coming from to pay my bills. I can travel when I want to. I can eat where I want to. I can like book a hotel and not have to worry about how much the hotel costs. You don't have that stress. Yeah, I don't have a nine to five. Number one, a nine to five that I don't like, I don't have to do. But I can gotcha. choose if I want right. to work and what kind of job I want to do, like something that I actually love and not, you know, not be forced to work so that I can pay the bills. That's such a change from like what society yeah, says, exactly. you know, like, like nine to five, it's like, like what you're supposed to do, supposed right? You're supposed to, supposed to work nine to five, yeah. get yeah. your money, pay your bills from your nine to five. Right, right. And then when you're 65, hopefully right. you have enough saved up that you can retire. That's the idea, right? You're on the right. Florida with the beach. You're Florida, right? exactly. You're living your life. Exactly. Your That's order. when you start living, right. when you retire, which no, it's not for not me. For I want to. I want to live now. So exactly. I want to get my money together now. <laughs> I started reading so many books about finances, about even taxes, building wealth, keeping wealth. Like I read every single book I could get my hand on about money. That's amazing. How did your money habits change from yeah, what you yeah. had learned? Yeah, you know the funny thing is, I feel like because I'm always good at saving. That part I just kind of I've kept, but what really changed was like I, I kind of finally took that step and started investing. So I started doing some investments, like you know, in the stock market and things. I started looking into real estate more, and then I started the sister fund with like an intention, like to help people, but also to make kind of another possibility of getting passive income. I do personal finance coaching for women or for anyone really, but you know, my focus is women. So I just kind of coach on the side and I do that every now and then. So it's not as much as, um, like, cause I was mainly focused last year on just doing my blog and getting all the articles up and you know, trying to be as helpful as possible with the blog. What would yeah. be the top three things you would tell someone who's just like, that who was you before, like just didn't know a lot about money, didn't yeah. have that knowledge from their parents. Yeah, just yeah, yeah caught up in debt. Number one, you have to, one, realize that you have a problem, you have an issue, and two, make the commitment to change. You have to make the commitment to change, right? And you have to have a reason for changing, so you really gotta think about why it is that you want to change. And then after you do that, you need to start learning. You just, you need to crack out open books, you need to go on online, read blogs, read anything, there's read YouTube sister, videos, the sister fun. get over to the sister fun <laughs> blog, you know what I'm saying? So once you get those together, you start learning, you really have to start educating yourself and, this, and then just take action. Nothing will change if you don't take action, so True. you have to really just start doing it. Take one Whatever. step at a time. One start step somewhere. at a time. Yeah. Anything. Mm -hmm. Even you have to start saving just like a dollar a month, five dollars a month. Start, start there. You have to start. So admit you have a problem. Admit you have a problem. Commit. Commit. Commit to changing. Commit, commit to changing and, and really thinking yeah. about your why. Like why the you need why, to change. The purpose. Yeah, your purpose. And start knowledge. learning and yeah. then action. And yeah. action. action. Okay, I guess it's for a bonus. You got a bonus. For a bonus, bonus. Cause you're, cause you gotta get bonus. You gotta get bonus. <laughs> a bonus. Just for you. Just for you. What yeah. advice would you give to anyone who wants to start something like you, wanting to help people, wanting to start yep. an organization? Yep. Yep. What would you advise someone who's like, you know, really just it's just an idea in their head? Yep. It's kind of similar to like what I was talking about just just the past. Um, like when you when you finally committed to make the change. Is taking the first step, taking some action. A lot of us think that we have to be experts. Oh, we have to know everything about whatever subject that we're going to talk about, and it's not necessarily the case. There's always going to be someone who does not know as much as you. Like you can be, you know, a sure. fifth grader. You, if you're a fifth grader, you can always help a third grader. You can always help a fourth grader because you have at least some knowledge that they don't have. What I would say is one: don't worry about being perfect. Don't worry about knowing everything about the subject or topic that you want to help people with um, and then just get started just start just take a step take a step it takes a lot of bravery yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. did yeah. you have any doubts when well you started out yeah yeah well even I did because and the thing is like you like you look around and you're like there's so many financial experts around there's so many people talking about finance right so do I really need Inundated, to? Yeah. Like, do I really need to? Do I have anything different to offer? But I think you have to realize that we're all different. We all come from different backgrounds, and and that uniqueness, and that different 
perspective is what the world kind of needs because you're you're going to be able to reach certain people that the other financial advisors or that the other people who you know skate or do you know whatever topic that you're thinking about getting into won't be able to reach so like your voice kind of matters it's kind of what you have to understand that yeah. you're different you're unique your perspective kind of needs to be out there in the world it needs to be heard nice. especially being a foreigner in japan especially yeah. being a foreigner in japan Even like more of a unique experience, experience everything life experience everything yeah talking about you know the whole pandemic yes it kind of it kind of threw off my groove mm -hmm. in 2020 okay i was supposed to give another talk they invited me back to give another talk at a regional convention as well here in the area but of course 2020 the pandemic happened and everything was kind of canceled so essentially what i'm trying to focus on now this year is maybe just doing more one-on-one -on -one coaching via zoom um, or just something online and maybe having like an online webinar or um, workshop just via zoom like doing things like that just online because we can't meet right, in person, right. which I would love to. Like yeah, I love course. talking face to face with people. We have to adapt, you know. Yeah. As long as you're getting the information, yeah, yeah, to yeah. people who need yeah. it. Yeah, exactly, know. exactly. And getting sister fund out there as well. Right, right, right. And I think that's what I was trying to do with the blog, right? Just get the name out there. So just to get enough articles, get enough traction, people coming to visit and see the site, and that way people can start to know about the mm. sister fund. Right. And then from there, maybe make it into more of the, the group, the organization, uh -huh. and do more coaching and do more things. In a way, the pandemic kind of helped me out because I was, had thought of what I wanted to do. And then the pandemic hit, and then I all of a sudden had all of this free time. So I was like, well, I can start the website. That's when I started writing the articles. And so then I just kept, I continued doing so. One question I, I, before I forget. Why did you decide to call it Sister Fun? Because I know you... It's for women, but right, right. Yeah. Well, girl, you know, my sisters, <laughs> my sisters. That's why I called it a sister fund. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people who are like me, and who grew up in a family like maybe where they just didn't learn about finances. We don't have that kind of education. No one in America gets the financial education that they should be getting, unless you come from a family that from money. From within, like people, right? they well, know, you know, they know how to create wealth. Unfortunately, that's how wealth is a exactly. generational egg and so with that with that in mind right because i wanted to help people like me so i thought like yeah i want to help my sisters like you know i want to give back to my sisters growing up with two other you sisters, have sisters like literally sisters right? sisters like you know I, I grew up with these sisters you know i have three sisters actually like you know my half sister as well but um so growing up with sisters so girls all girls in the family i feel i feel more connected those are people i want to help i want to help women get their finances together because I feel like women are mostly overlooked in society right, in general yeah. and even in like the financial world the financial industry like in terms of investing like it being a real estate investor or even stock right. stock investing or trading anything like that it's mostly male dominated it's true it's very very male dominated so like I just kind of wanted to okay. get back that way and the sister fund I just you know my father's Nigerian and you know they always say like you know I, don't know, I just hear that you know Sister, my sister. It's like a term of endearment. Yeah, like a term of endearment. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So, the sister fund. In, in like Dominican culture, everybody calls each other primo. Oh, really? My cousin. My everybody's cousin. my cousin. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? It's just it's a more common you say sister. Right, you say right. sister, sister, or brother, right? You say right. my brother, my sister. We always say it. Just nice. It creates a kind of like family, right, right. community, sort right. of, which it's is what you're trying to go and create. Right. Exactly. Awesome. I want the community. I want the family. Yep. Okay, you told me about what's this year planning 2021. This year I am planning to do more like coaching, personal finance coaching or business finance coaching, just kind of one on one. But I'm also trying to, you know, push myself to do a little bit more. So I want to do like live events. I want to have a few money challenges that people can join and just really get started building the group. So building that community that I wanted. So just getting people on Facebook, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest. Kind more of engagement. building, yeah. I just want to get more engagement and building the community, and also just producing products and things to give for people that could be useful. And I made like a whole like spreadsheet wow. for everyone to keep like organized in their debt or like okay. in, like a tracker so that they can pay it off. So I kind of want to do more offers that way and kind of give out to people to help them organize. with their finances. finances. Yeah, get Sounds their finances exciting. organized. And stuff. 
I am also finishing up a, a book that I'm writing, what? which will hopefully be out soon on Amazon. Wow. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. So what what's the book about? It is about saving mm -hmm. money. Oh, so the book is really about how to increase your savings rate, like. 6x like 6x your savings rate and if you can do that you and can still be able to eat and still be able to eat no and live and live and yes and still live and well, go out for fun so like and that's it's just about a legal legal way <laughs> it is legal it is definitely legal it is definitely legal <laughs> essentially the book is just a challenge to get people to try to maximize their savings rate that way they can pay off debt way faster right. like you can pay it off maybe 10 times faster and I show like these calculations in my book of what you can do, like what happens when you increase your savings rate and just like what you can do with that, with all that extra money. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you don't need budgeting, you don't, you don't really got to budget, like I don't budget. So. Wow, this is coming I from Miss Finance. But I mean, the thing you is. You don't budget? What? No, because, okay, here's the thing. So, budgeting works for some people and it doesn't work for everyone. Okay. And that's the thing, people always want to tell you like, oh, you have to budget, you should do this, but it just, sometimes it just doesn't work for people and some people just can't do it. So there, there are ways around that as well. And I'm not a big budgeter. I have my own thing, which is what I talk about in the book, but okay. yeah, I'm, I'm excited big, I'm to see what this book is about <laughs> and your strategies and strategy. I gave you some strategies. Yeah, because I'm not. Amazing. Yeah, I'm not upset. It's supposed to be budgeting and whatnot. Right, so, right, right. Yeah. For me, it's just a total waste of time right. because I do all this budgeting and then I just don't look at it. You like, throw it out the window. Yeah, I literally, like I do all this writing stuff up and I just don't look at it. So your book is more like realistic more yeah. you, know, you can actually yeah. put in and it's just use. to get it going immediately you can yeah. do it immediately you don't have to do all this you know take an hour to write right. up a budget no no no, no. okay yeah. i'm definitely looking forward to this yeah. it's, an e -book? Book. it's an ebook it's an ebook okay yeah it'll be okay. ebook so it'll be on amazon but i think you can like i'll set it up so you can buy a paperback as well okay so ebook and paperback and um audiobook as well so i'm gonna do the audiobook wow that might take a little longer Awesome. That's a, is there any other like I feel like I know, girl, because I keep just out holding out on me. The scoop. The ass so scoop yeah, there's a home baker summit that's going to be going on in March, and I'll be giving a talk about uh, being profitable from the beginning oh, okay. and like business finance on the finance side. On the finance. Awesome. Yeah, so that's coming up. March. Oh, is it uh, online? Things. It'll be online. Okay. Yeah, it'll be online. Yeah. Your finance consultant, author soon, author soon public yes, speaker, yes, yes. blogger, blogger, speaker, speaker. coach. <laughs> I can't wait to hear everything. way more. We gotta have another conversation. I know, right? Because I know. We can't even keep up with it. I know. I can't even keep up. I can't even. Do you wanna like add anything else? Like let people know about the sister fund, about yourself. So if people want to reach me or they want to check out my site, it's called www.thesisterfund. That's S I S T A. You gotta get the A. S I S T A. <laughs> Fund.com, so they can check me out there on the website. I have a Facebook group also called the Sister Fund, and I'm on Pinterest and Instagram. Perfect. So we'll definitely yeah. attach all those links. Yeah. And yeah. hopefully, people watching will be part of your community. Right. Exactly. And hopefully, I'll get the YouTube channel up channel at some point. <laughs> no, all right, Gigi. We'll have another a part two. Yeah. And yep. definitely catch up and update with all the definitely definitely exciting things it. you're doing. Let's do it. Thank you so much for <laughs> yeah. talking and, and having this chat. Thanks, Gigi. Yeah. Nice, nice chatting.